one of the biggest stories that happened in a while, the BTB Savage thing, yeah. man. Yeah, rest in peace, BTB Savage. Rest in peace to the to the victim uh, in that, that robbery that happened. And uh, just a sad situation overall. Very sad. I'm, I was in disbelief until after everything unfolded yeah. about just how serious and how real and, and how in real time shit was. Yeah. First and foremost, because, you know, there's a lot of people with questions and, you know, inquiring minds are going to ask, mm -hmm. how did you even encounter BTB Savage? Sure. Okay. So, so the story of this rapper out of San Antonio surviving a, like a home invasion robbery was making its rounds. You probably saw it as well, mm -hmm. right? I, I wasn't familiar with BTB Savage. I wasn't familiar with his music, but the story itself was starting to circulate. So um, we started DM each other and, you know, I told him, hey, I'm glad you're okay, number one. Uh, me personally, you know, I've, I've touched on this story before, you know, with Boosie and, and a couple other people. Uh, I survived a home invasion. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you've told pieces of it, but pieces like... Of it, yeah. We, we never really know, we never knew when it happened and like... Yeah, it happened around 2005, maybe? Mm. 2005, 2006, if I were to, you know, you know, I'd have to look it up again, but yeah, right around that time. Um, staying at a girl's house who I had met, you know, it was like our second date, middle of the night, she woke me up, said someone's at my window. I'm not realizing that we're on a second story a condo and the window she's referring to is a balcony. There's a balcony behind that window. So how was someone there? I go to the, to the window and I pull back the curtain and there's a guy staring at me on the balcony. Does he have a weapon? What's that? Does he have a weapon or? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know yet, it's but I'm dark. like a, you know, like a deer in the headlights. You know, you don't expect something like that. Uh, so he attacks me and jumps in through the window she like runs out and leaves me to die basically. And this is her spot, right? This is her spot. Holy yeah. shit. So, <clears throat> you know, with, um, without getting into too many details, it, it turned into a really bloody, violent situation that I managed to walk away from. You know what I'm saying? Fortunately. Fortunately. Yeah. I mean, I still have cuts on my hand and my eyes from that night, but. Really? Yeah. But I walked away and he didn't walk away, essentially. Um, you know, so, you know, although he did survive, you know, let me just put that out there. Um, but that that situation changed my life in terms of how I view things and, and the way I approach people and how I, I handle my fear and, and, and so forth. Um, you know, when you go through something like that and you survive, it gives you a different way of looking at the world. You know what I mean? Because I felt like I was going to die that night because he was acting like he had a gun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he was asking me if I was ready to die and, and those types of things. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. so being able to ultimately walk away from that by, through violence basically, um, I just looked at things a little differently and I don't get scared of threats or tough talk or whatever else because I've, I've been there before. You know what I mean? So saying that, when it comes to people who've been through similar situations like that, I have sort of a kind of a special place in my heart for people who survive home invasions and, and so forth. Remember, like, um, you know, I did the interview with, oh, man. Um, you did with Draco. Um, Draco. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, but, no, Soldier but, Boy. Well, the Soldier Boy situation, uh, for, uh, Ben Jay from the New Boys. Mm. Remember, he killed a guy that was yeah, trying yeah. to rob him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so there, there's been multiple, you know, and then I just recently did one with Hurricane Chris, mm -hmm. who just uh, beat a second degree murder charge. It, you know what I'm saying? So, so I have sort of a, a special place in my heart to people who protect their homes and people who have attacks done in their home and manage to walk away from it. I think a lot of people feel the same. Yeah. yeah you but know, I've had even, a personal experience with it, yeah, is what I'm saying. Well, obviously at a personal experience, but, yeah. but even like, for example, somebody like Pop Smoke, like we yeah. all think about the Pop Smoke situation yeah. where it's like the place you probably feel the most comfortable, even though it was in an Airbnb, you, you yeah. still feel like you're you're in a safe place where you're going to lay your head. Yeah. You feel protected, but then something else happens and it's going crazy. I think that's why the B2B Savage story was a little bit, you know, yeah, like the audacity of the story. Yeah, yeah. So, so we started to, to DM each other and, um, 
you know, I asked him if he was interested in doing an interview, and he said, absolutely, this is, you know, this is going to be bigger than Soldier Boy. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, cool. And it even got to the point, like, because I think he had changed his number because we had contacted him, and then, like, a little time had passed, and he hit me back. He's like, hey, man, like, do, do, you know, I still want to do I'll, I'll pay you. I'll pay you to do the interview. And I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's cool. Like, we just couldn't really? contact you. It's still going to happen. So, so we did the interview, and um, before the interview started, like, I didn't know the whole story. Right. It was I didn't, you know, realize that his girlfriend was there and was involved in it. So we kind of before the interview started, he kind of went through the whole story from beginning to end just so I could have like a, a blueprint for it. And I'm like, OK, cool. I got the story. So he basically retold the same story again on camera. And I just want to point out that I, I was having, you know, after it came out, there was accusations that I had cut out. Yeah, I see part, part of the interview. Right. I, 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 did I come from the mother or whatever? They're like, oh, yes. it was a music interview, and it you was, just entered. Like, it, it, it was, it was the mother. And, and let me just say this: um, my extreme condolences to BTB Savage's mother. I cannot imagine what it's like to lose a child, to have to bury your twenty-six-year-old son. You know, as a mother, I, I can't even comprehend it. And I, I know that she's going through her own thing, and. You know, people deal with pain in their own type of way, but but the accusations of we were doing the interview and BTB Savage said, "Hey man, uh, I don't want to talk about it." Uh, you know, condolences to the family. I just want to talk about music. That never happened. You know, I think she even claimed that she has the footage from his phone. So I mean, she's welcome to put that out if that's the case, because that that just never happened. When I watched the interview, it, it felt like there's a clear intro, and then at the end, it's like, "Hey." Okay, you know, hopefully we talk again. But that yeah. was the end. It didn't feel like it was like, all right, so now let's just talk about the music. Or Well, you know, I mean, listen, he wasn't a prominent music artist. Yeah, yeah, Just to be Clearly. honest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To, to, be, to be realistic, he was contacted about this particular situation from, from the get. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to talk about your music. Oh, and we'll also throw it in. No, it's like we're talking about this situation because as a, as a music artist, he was still very much underground and up and coming. Not to say mm -hmm. he could have not progressed into something you know, uh, substantial, but at the point he didn't really have a lot of views and really didn't have any hit songs and so forth. So the, the interview was solely based on the situation, but at no point did he say, I don't want to talk about it or, or, you know, I just want to talk about the music, condolences to the family that, that never happened. We, we, we wouldn't have cut that out and we never cut that out. And, and if anyone has that, they're welcome to put it out. Um, so, so we did the interview <clears throat> and, um, you know, I, I was a little surprised as to the approach that he took in the way that he was describing it. I could somewhat relate because when you when you get through a situation like that and you manage to walk out of a room when someone just tried to kill you, your adrenaline is going to be going for a long time. It's not, you know, that day, I remember my adrenaline was through the fucking roof. Mm. But for the weeks and months to come afterwards, you're still sort of on this like, wow, like I, I almost died and I survived. You know, so... I understood some of the bravado of, of his voice, but you know, I, if you watch the interview, I was asking him, I said, are you worried about the retaliation? And his answer was somewhat braggadocious, right? And I said, well, are you, are you considering moving away? Because I've, I've had too many interviews like this with like a FBG duck or a Mo3 where I talk about, you know, saying that, hey, moving away is probably a good idea right now. And they always, argue with me and so forth. And once again, he said, no, I'm not moving away. And there was kind of some more bragging that they had to do with that. So, you know, we, we finished off the interview. We put it out all in one piece because there was really just one topic. I was shocked that you did that. It was like, well, it was it, 30 it, minutes. It, it was only 30 minutes. It was just one topic. We didn't feel that it made sense to chop it up. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's just put it out as one piece and leave it as is. Um, it took us about, I don't know, a week, week and a half to put it together. 